Hey everyone! In this video, we will go over how to install a Parsite service so that you can utilize the visual editor for MediaWiki. The currently available documentation for installing the Parsite service can seem overwhelming, but the installation and setup isn't too difficult for a beginner. To get started, what we need to start off by doing is to import the repository GPG key. So we will begin by typing sudo apt install dir manager. And as you can tell on my uh, installation of Ubuntu 24 through Google Cloud, it's already pre-installed. Yours, it might not be, so make sure you run the command. Next thing we need to do is type sudo apt key advanced key server keys.gnupg.net Steve dash keys. Then we'll type the key number a three oh three six a zero three four four four. Awesome. So we have successfully imported that key. Next thing we can do is to add the actual Wikimedia repository by typing sudo at add repository. And then I'll go ahead and I'll copy over URL. Beautiful. So now that we have the repository added, we will move on to the installation of the Parsite service by typing sudo apt install apt transport dash HTTPS. Awesome. And the next thing we'll do is type sudo apt update sudo apt install Parsite. And then once this is done, we will move on to the actual configuration of this. Give it a couple seconds. Awesome, now that that's done, we can go ahead and we can actually uh, check to see if it's running yet. And it is successfully running, beautiful. The next thing what we're gonna do is we're going to actually, oops, uh, check the configuration files for this and then edit as needed. So we're gonna type vim slash etsy media wiki parsoid and config dot yaml. And in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, move down to the uh, MediaWiki APIs, which you can see at the very top of the screen right here. And down here, what we need to do is we need to set the actual URL to our API PHP. And then we also need to set the actual domain name itself. So just a heads up that if you haven't set this yet, uh, make sure you set it to the actual fully, quali fully qualified domain name unless you're just gonna be running on your local host then set that up uh, appropriately. So what we're gonna do now is right at the top right here, my test server is void.org. And if you follow my previous video, you're actually gonna get rid of this W and it's just gonna be slash api.php. So on my other screen, if we do api.php, you can see that we actually have our API uh, documentation page. So we don't need that just yet. So in here, once that's set up, uh, you'll come down here to your domain name. And this will not be the uh, fully qualified domain name with the HTTP and everything. It's just going to be the domain name. So for me, it's going to be void byteorg Remember that in the future, this has to match your local settings file exactly. If it is different, you're going to get 500 errors uh, when trying to start your visual editor. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to right quit that. And now that is saved. Uh, let me move back over to my notes real quick. All right, so we changed the URL to be correct. We changed the main to be correct. We saved that. So we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, actually downloading Visual Editor. So the command is going to be wget and then the actual URL of the download. Once that's downloaded, we're going to unzip that and we're going to actually have that file sent over to uh, var www.html media wiki extensions folder. 
And that's done now. So now that it's done, we need to actually edit uh, our local settings.php file. And we're going to go ahead go down to the very bottom of this file. And we're going to copy and paste a big chunk of this, which will be available. I'll link all the documentation down below. So what this is, is that this is just actually setting the visual editor to be enabled. Uh, once you put this part in, don't write quit save it. There's a secondary part, but this is pretty much just simply enabling the service. And we're going to go ahead and move a little bit more down. And right here, we're going to set everything that's actually necessary. So what I was talking about before, about how you need to set the exact same domain name, you set it right there. And then up here, if you're using, as it says right here, if you're using Debian, make sure you're using port 8142. By default, it will come with port 8000 at the very end. And so just make sure that's set up correctly. And now that that's done, go ahead, right click that, and that should be active. The next thing you need to move on ahead and do is to open port 8142. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually type UFL, UFW allow uh, 8142. Awesome. And uh, I actually need to <laughs> add a couple more things. Awesome. So the reason why you saw me edit a couple of things here is uh, the first one was for the Parsite service, the second one was for Secure Shell, the third one was for HTTP, and then the fourth one was for HTTPS. Uh, if you guys do enable the UFW on a W machine on a Debian machine such as Ubuntu, you need to make sure that you open up all the ports that are required to actually connect to it. So uh, the reason why I did this is just to show you what will happen if you do it on something like your local host. Uh, if you don't open up uh, port 22, and that's where you're using SSH over, and you uh, exit out, and then you try to re-SSH into it, it's not going to work. Uh, it's going to deny your connections over and over again. So just make sure you have the correct ports set to open uh, before you actually enable that service and log out. Uh, you can uh, you can maintain your current secure shell. Uh, while you don't have port 22 open, but once you exit out and try to reconnect, it's going to deny you straight up. So just make sure your ports are set correctly. Uh, on Google Cloud or AWS, just go to your firewall console and add the ports there. Uh, so the next part, what we can do is we should be able to go back over to this page and refresh it. And we are not currently seeing uh, A new edit tab just yet. So let's force refresh that. Still nothing. So we're going to go back over to our machine. We are going to double check that that went through. So we're going to go to var ww. Awesome. We're going to list everything out. We got visual editor, change those permissions just to double check. And then we're going to do recursive on that as well. And let's see if that re-enabled it. Nope, not just yet. So I think the issue might be with uh, the local settings file. So then let's go to the very bottom and double check to see that it actually enabled it. So we're actually missing uh, one command. So I'll go ahead and find that out real quick. Let's see what that's hiding at. There it is. So we actually forgot one command. Uh, in this case, it's going to go right below here, just like that. And once you right quit, you come back here, it should be good to go. Perfect. So now, as you can tell, we now have an additional tab. So Visual Editor will actually take over uh, the old Edit tab and then put the old edit tab under a new tab called edit source. So edit source is for the source code, and then edit is just for the new visual editor. 
Man, this does not like me today, does it? I get a hit on that, a hit on that, but that won't me mess with it just yet. Okay, so just force refreshing it. All right, so uh, this is what I'm talking about where if you have an error going on, so let's say you don't have the firewall open, that's correct, or just, just any generalized issue with that, it's going to throw either uh, HTTP error 404 or 500 at you. So on our VM, what we can do is we can actually search, let's do cat uh, var log, and we want to do parsoid and the log. And in here, it can actually tell us what the issue is. So this is actually telling us that we have an invalid domain name. Uh, we know that's not true. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll double check our files real quick. Uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember the path for that. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to, pull this up. Oh yes, that's the MediaWiki parsoid config YAML. And let's see what's going on. So our domain is correct, except avoid dash byte.org. That is my website name. Uh, and then our URI is set to void dash byte.org as well, which is also correct. What we'll do is we will check uh, our site's enabled in Apache. Our server name is correct in there as well. And then lastly, we will check the uh, local settings file. The bar, www.html, media wiki, and local settings. So we'll come up to the very top, right where domain name is set up here. That's probably where the issue is. And everything is set correctly. So we're getting an error. We might just have to reset the service. So what we'll do is we'll do system control restart uh, parsoid service. It'll take a few seconds. This one is a pretty big service. Awesome. And then we'll come back here. We'll go back to home page. And then we'll switch to visual editor and we'll see if it'll pop up. And it now has. Okay, so uh, the issue what I think occurred was uh, when we first brought in that file, uh, it had the incorrect domain name, uh, which was voidbyte.org without the dash. And so we just had to restart the services to do that. So if you run into an issue where you make a configuration change to the uh, config YAML file, uh, what you need to do is you need to actually restart the parsoid service. So that'll happen a lot. So if you make a mistake in that and you fix it, but you don't restart the service, you're going to get pushed out with a bunch of issues. So now that we have that done, we can come back here and we can actually make a change, right? So uh, by the way, if you want to make a horizontal line, you just type in two equal marks like that. So what we'll do is we'll do that and we'll type the example and just double check this saves. So just because this is up and running doesn't mean it's going to save. So if you have an issue with your firewall, this is where you'll run into it right here, right when you save. So if you click save changes and it doesn't go through, it's because you don't have the correct port open. So now as we can tell on mine, it does work. So you'll usually get a 300 error, not the 400 uh, error for uh, the firewall. I don't remember the exact number, but if you are able to actually open up the new visual editor, but you're not able to save, it's firewall. Uh, if you guys need help uh, with setting this up, just leave a comment. Uh, I can send you over to my Discord and I can help walk you through it all. It's very simple. All the guys out there uh, are very in depth, especially because they cover almost every different distribution of Linux. Uh, so just make sure you read everything that only applies to your actual distribution and you should be set. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concern, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.